in three, two. <sighs> Welcome back to um, the Built with Chocolate Milk Coaching Lounge, the THSEA Coaching School and Convention. We are joined by the former Hampshire Finette Longhorns coach, Phil Danaher. Hi, coach. <laughs> no, great. Good introduction. <laughs> but the one thing I just want to help you out with. Okay. It goes three, two, one. You forgot to hit, you got to hit you one. You know what? That always that always trips me up. I've, it, <laughs> as you know, I'm slow, <laughs> but I get there. I'm slow, <laughs> but I get there. As you said, the elevator doesn't go all the way to the top. <laughs> it's Phil Danaher, our friend from Corpus Christi, Cal Allen, and the winningest coach in Texas high school football history. It's the king. It's what everyone calls him. Everyone has always called him the king. It's what they call him. Um, how are things in Corpus Christi, coach? Uh, fine. Let me ask you. If anybody okay. calls me the king, where did they get that idea from? I don't recall. You don't recall? No, mm. I don't. Um, I, I would need to... I would need to look that up. Maybe, Max, do you know? Max, do you have any idea where? No, no. Max is shaking his head. He doesn't know either. So, I mean, there's no way to tell. Um, what year would it have been? 1916? I mean, 2016? 2016 is when we put you on the secondary cover of the magazine with uh, the headline, The King. Okay, and so you just said we? So you were part of it then? Mm -hmm. I'll own part of it. I will say I was involved. <laughs> um you um, and then you called me that the, when you got your magazine, and I think the words that came out of your mouth were, "What the hell are you doing?" No, I did not say that. <laughs> Something like that. People, if you're listening, you can't believe everything this you guy were, said. You, but you were you were not you were not pleased with it though. I remember you being like, "I'm never going to hear the end of this," <laughs> and that being your major concern. Okay, now the only thing I did. And you turned this around on me is that last that year at coaching convention, I walked in, there's the big tent, Dave Campbell magazine. I said, I'm gonna walk over there. And I was a little bit loud. I would say there's about six or eight of those guys sitting out there. I said, Hey, I wanna know who picked Cal Allen to play Alito in the state championship. Mm -hmm. And all of them pointed at you. Yes, it was <laughs> I was sold out by my by my colleagues <laughs> so quickly yep. by them. And then you were, uh, and then you informed me that you did not agree with our predictions. That's right. Um, okay, let's talk a little Cal Allen football. Um, last year, a run to a state semifinal. Mm -hmm. um, surprise, surprise. Um, this it was obviously a special year. Um, I'm I'm interested in, in in what you think. You've coached a lot of great teams. What was special about the 2018 team? Well, how far they came, because we had very few returning kids. We had like three coming back on offense and four on defense. Mm -hmm. And going into that season, we really thought, you know, our our run of 34 consecutive playoff appearances was in jeopardy. Mm -hmm. But these kids came through, you know. We had to play sophomores and, and a couple of freshmen, you know. So, but they came, they played hard and gave us everything they had. And we were fortunate to make it to the semifinals. But you were one play away from going to state championship, or one flag away. Let me just put it that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was it was obviously a very tight game with a with a good four pin Marshall team that was playing heavy heart and, and things like that. Um, you know, one thing that's all, that's all I've, I've always been interested uh, when talking with you is um, you, you keep your kids so focused on on the one game at a time, and even in a even at a place at Cal Allen where winning happens a lot, you've been fortunate enough to to win a lot. Um, how is it that you are able to maintain focus on, on one week at a time, knowing full well that there are going to be kids who want to say, oh, boy, hey, if we win these next couple of games, we can go you know, play so-and-so in the state semifinals or something like that. How do you keep kids focused on, on what's in front of them? I guess probably the easiest way there is you, you have to talk to them constantly about staying focused, their attitude and everything about, you know, they, they – they playing in it for a school and it, with such tradition of not not you know missing the playoffs in 34 years here 34 years in a row and i i always remind them said so boys you want to be the team that doesn't make the playoffs <laughs> i said if you don't make the playoffs i said then you won't ever forget that until the day you die mm -hmm. so you and that not only that the people in the community will always remember you being on the team that broke that the record of 
24, uh, 34 consecutive wins. Well, and you were talk, we were talking up there um, that when you were doing an interview with Fox Sports Southwest, and, and, and you, you mentioned in the hallway, you go, you know what, the number one motivator for people is, is fear. Right, it is. And, and I imagine that, that, you, that especially at a place like Cal Allen, with such tradition, you got to be the team that keeps it going oh, because yeah. you can't be the one who drops the ball. You're right. And that, like I told you all yesterday, fear is the biggest motivator in our life. And, you know, these kids need to be motivated that uh, they better be afraid that they're going to lose mm-hmm. because that way they'll work that much harder. Of course, after every workout, you know, I pull them together. I always pretty much say, boys, who worked harder than you guys did today? Mm-hmm. No one. All right, now let's get up and get, get the job done. Mm-hmm. You know, and then we tell them, you know, boys, we've really never lost a game. Mm-hmm. The clock ran out before we had a chance to win it, you know. <laughs> so, well. Yeah, well, the, the clock's run out on a lot of your opponents. You're at, you're at, four, you're at 458 wins. Um, you're just running up the score on people at this point uh, as far as the win total is concerned. Um, but, you, you know, you and I have had candid conversations about, about – about records and about you know what these things mean to you and 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 the the thing that i i know if if people haven't heard this i know you're always very differential to your assistants i know that you're a big believer that yes you're the head coach and you're in the big chair but you're just a part of a team that is putting together this team oh without a doubt yeah i don't go out there and play (laughs) (laughs) and the kids who have played for us from when i was in dilly the hampshire finette to cal island and the coaches who have coached, mm-hmm. you know, several of them have passed on. Mm-hmm. I guess that's telling you how old I am now. But uh, the thing about it is, uh, you know, you can't, I can't take all the credit, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, we've been very fortunate. I've, the one thing people say, how you do it? The one thing I've done well is I've hired good, great mm-hmm. coaches. Mm-hmm. You surround yourself with good people and you don't have a problem. Yep. And, and you, you've done that better, better than most. Um, so let's look forward to this 2019 team. And I know you are always uh, reticent to, uh, to, 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 to say you know exactly what this team is going to be like. But um, through the offseason and knowing what you know about the squad, this it seems like it's going to be a more experienced squad than, right. than last year. Um, what, what, can, what, do you, what do you think is going to be uh, – how, how would you describe what you think this 2019 team is going to be? I'll tell you the one thing we have it that's an advantage for us this year that we've not had – I don't know if we've ever had it before, but uh, because we're such a small 5A, we're one of the smaller 5As in the state of Texas, and, uh, and injuries will get you, and especially on the offensive line, you know, and we've never really had any depth mm-hmm. with the offensive line, and, and, you know, I don't care what anybody says, football is determined by the line of scrimmage, yep. the defense and the offensive fronts, and... Uh, you know, and when you start losing a player there or two, then you really go down quickly. Mm-hmm. And so uh, this year we've got uh, more backup offensive linemen than we've had. Now, we don't have the running backs, but we've got the – but I, we feel real com- comfortable that we have such a, a good number because the how much we had to rebuild last year, mm-hmm. those kids are now coming up. You yeah. know, and some of them were freshmen, some were sophomores, and now they're juniors. And seniors, and they'll be either backups or starters. Um, Dave Campbell's Texas Football, a magazine, um, uh, ranks you guys number three in 5A Division II. Um, do you want to yell at me now, or do you want to wait till the microphone's off? Or <laughs> Did you pick them again this year? I had a hand in, in the rankings. Oh, you always have a hand. And, <laughs> and tell me, when I talked to those guys in uh-huh. 2016 who made the picks, uh-huh. they all pointed to you. None yeah. of them pointed to themselves. I agree. So I'll own it. I think you guys are going to be pretty good. I think, I think that um, I think your defense has a chance to be really good. I'm a big fan of Riggs Barrett. I think your linebacker core has a chance to be very good. Um, I think that in Region 4, I think that you guys have to start the year as the favorite in Region 4. That's my opinion. Do you disagree with anything I said? No, I agree with you. I hate to admit that, especially online. Look at him. Look at him jumping. Do we get, do we get that on Jumping up and down. We did it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I, do, I do need to ask about my favorite Danaher. Okay. My favorite Danaher, the boss, Anita, um, who, of course, has one of the most impressive football collections and just football uh, memorabilia yeah, collections in, in, in America. 
Did, did you have anything new recently? Do you know? Well, no, not really, because we didn't get to bring home the goat football from <laughs> from going to Sing Five. No, <laughs> she does have, and she's really worked hard at the leather helmets and the oh, old yeah. old game pants, and you know, Bear Bryant hair in the Dallas uh, not hair but hat in uh, Dallas Cowboys Super Bowl rings and stuff. She has like. a Bear Bryant hat. Yeah, you saw it. Oh, that's right. Because yeah. the thing that always strikes me when when we went down there and, and looked at her um, collection was the um, the football from the last Southwest Conference game. That's when my older son Cody. Yeah. yeah. And uh, they got into a scuffle at the end of the game. He and he had just had the ball, and so he just put it in his helmet and walked Ran off. Ran off. And then. Uh, and he got to be the favorite child for a minute. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. And then, uh, actually, the next year was the opening kickoff for the Big 12 in uh, Missouri. And Mm -hmm. uh, Texas played. And uh, the opening kickoff, because uh, Cody, we couldn't always go to the games because we were in the playoffs and we missed a lot of Saturday games. But he'd give our tickets to other kids' parents and stuff, managers and stuff. And so the opening kickoff, they said, hey, Cody, you want this to go with the, the last play of the (laughs) the <laughs> Southwest Conference game, uh, Championship, and I said, well, he said, yeah, so we've got both those balls, and that's, then we got some some very old balls. You it know. is a remarkable, remarkable collection, really and truly, and, and, and it's uh, another reason why Anita is my favorite, Dan Hur. Uh It's Phil Dan Hur, the head coach, the former head coach of the Dilly Wolves, joining us here on Texas Football Today. We're going to spin the Dick Sporting Goods Wheel of Questions, aren't we? <laughs> okay. You want to give this thing a spin? Well, let there's, me see. There's, <laughs> nothing on, there's nothing on here that's going to get you in trouble. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. Don't worry. Have you? I didn't see you do this with the other ones. Uh, yes, we have. We've done it with everyone, Coach. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Phil Danaher spinning the Dick Sporting Goods Wheel questions. Okay, this is good. We asked the same question to uh, Cornell Thompson of West Orange Stark. Do you have a game? You coach a lot of games. Won a lot of games. Do you have any game day superstitions? Something you've got to do every game day or else you're going to be off the whole day? Mm, not so much uh, game day, mm-hmm. but the day before. Mm-hmm. On uh, our, our last workout before we get ready for the game, for a game, mm-hmm. and we've done all the workouts, and I've, I've talked to the kids and everything, and, and I always say, hey, boys, Hayes in the barn, you know. So it's now time to get ready. So if I try to walk off ever when I, or I forget, coach, coach. Coach, wh- where's what? the hay? Yeah, they'll, they'll do it. <laughs> coach, come back. we got to hear the hay's <laughs> in the barn. I've been doing it for, well, I'm not going to say how many years because then you know how old I am. But, You've been uh, doing it for at least five years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At, at least, least five years. You know, I've been doing it for 35 years at, at uh, Cal Allen. Mm-hmm. And so, yes, that's one thing we do that's superstitious. And then, you know, before the game, we really low key. Mm-hmm. No, yeah. I don't. I don't get them all pumped up or anything because you want to do that when the game's happening. Mm-hmm. You know, not ahead of time. Because I've I've heard of coaches that do that. And like I know, I'm not going to say the name of the coach. He had his kids all pumped up. We're gonna go out there. We're gonna we're gonna tear them. We're gonna tear them apart and all this. Okay, y'all ready? Let's go. And they take off running. The door in the locker room is locked, and they all start running and back running into each other. So, all that motivation was down the line. And the same coach, get this, the same coach a year or two later, has them all pumped up. Same thing. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do this. But this time he's smart. He makes sure the door's open. And he gets them all fired up. Now let's go out there and get it done. And they, they get through the door and they take off running. He forgets that in the old gymnasiums where they have those concrete barriers mm-hmm. that come out, he forgets the duck. Runs into it. Boom. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Puts him on his back. <laughs> well, Phil Danaher. So, so you're not going to see me running <laughs> up there. Phil Danaher, <laughs> I mean this sincerely. It is always good to see you. It's always good to chat with you. We wish you the best of luck in 2019. Well, thank you. It's always fun visiting with you. <laughs>